Hello everybody and welcome back to another JavaScript tutorial. So in today's video we're going to be talking about is something called mutability. Now this is important because if later on, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do this in this series yet, we start talking about objects more, it's very important to understand how items can kind of change and values can change in our program. And this is a kind of a more advanced topic where a lot of beginners find it difficult, but I'm just going to you know, kind of tell you guys this is extremely important. So make sure you're paying attention. And if you don't understand everything from this video, you know, look up some stuff on your own and make sure you understand this concept because it's very important. So the first thing we need to talk about when we talk about mutability is first of all, what even is mutability? Well, when we talk about mutability, we're talking about being mutable or immutable. And that essentially means changeable or unchangeable. Now, when we have a program, we have something called variables, and then we have something called primitive data types and something called objects. So for example, if I say var x equals five, what I've done is created the variable x, so this x here, and it stores the value five, which is what we call a primitive type. And I'll talk more about that in one second. Now, if we say var z equals, and I create a new array here, this actually stores what we call an object. And if I were to create another variable and I said variable s equals z, what I've actually done here, and we're going to talk about this more in depth, but I'm just kind of going through the beginning stages here, is rather than created a new array that is equal to, you know, whatever the z array was, I've actually just created another name to reference z. So that essentially means that if I change anything on the variable s, it's actually going to affect z as well. And same goes if I change anything on the variable s or sorry z it's going to affect the variable s as well that is because these variables here actually what we call reference the same object so changes to one of those variables will change the other one because they're not actually storing you know the value of the array they're storing the array as one object in total whereas when we have this variable x like this this holds just a value it doesn't actually hold a reference to a specific object and again, you know, you're probably understanding why you might be confused by this. We're going to go through a ton of examples, but let's do one now. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. So our primitive data types are what we call immutable, which means they don't change. And we're just referencing values rather than objects. So if I do something like var, you know, t equals x, well, if I change the value of t, that does not affect x. The reason for that is because this value here is a primitive, uh, primitive type. It's not an object. So we can actually do that. So this is a way to kind of, you know, make a copy of this variable X here, and then we can just change it within T. Whereas if we did this with an array, well, we're going to get the same thing we just talked about, because this is what we call an object and same goes for sets and for maps as well. Okay, so let's do an example. I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it uh, add five, we're going to take in some uh, variable, let's just call this num. And then what we're going to do is simply add five to this number and print it out. So we're going to say num plus equals five console dot log num. Now let's just call this function here. So let's actually call a variable. Let's call it X. Let's set it equal to five. Let's do add five X and then let's console dot log the value of X. Now, if you're paying attention and you understand what I was talking about, you should be able to answer this question here, which is okay. So what am I going to be printing? What are the two values that are going to print out to the screen? That's what I want you guys to think about now. And I'm just going to go into the answer. So pause it if you want to, you know, take a look at that. Well, what happens here? So what we're doing is passing this variable that we've defined, which is five to this function add five. What this function is going to do is take that in as a parameter called num. It's going to add five to that parameter num, and then it's going to print out that value. So we should get 10 from inside this function. But then down here, does X change? Like I passed the variable X to this function and we added five to it. So does that mean we added five to X or does it mean we just added five to num? How does this work? Well, let's have a look here. Let's refresh the page and no, it does not change the value X. We get 10 and we get five. The reason for that is because when we pass a value to this parameter, what essentially is happening is inside our function, something happens like a line of code is kind of written like this num equals x. Now we recall from before that since num is what we call a primitive type, this just creates a copy of it and it doesn't actually change the underlying value of this variable. So that is the first thing to understand that when we're calling with primitive types, that's what happens. Now, what are the primitive types? Well, primitive types are numbers, strings, booleans, undefined and null. So for example, if I say var equals string like that, 
this is a primitive type obviously well this isn't good now this will work we can try this actually so let's refresh we get string five and we get string we can see it didn't change and now if i do let's say you know the value true and rather than setting this like this we'll just set this to false and we print these out we can see we get false and we get true and these are our primitive data types right and same thing with null and same thing with undefined so those are what we call the primitive types now let's talk about what we call the reference data types or the object data types and see how these work differently so we're going to create a new function now and what i'm going to do is actually say um, append five now what this is going to do is it's going to take in some array so we'll call it array and what it's going to do is simply append so i think we can just do that with push the value five we're going to console.log our array here i'm going to now just make an array in here that's one two three four so this should be one two three four five and now we're going to have a look at what this does so if we change this name to append five we need to understand what this is going to do so before i go think about what's going to print out here is it going to be you know the same result that we've seen previously or is this going to be different well what we're doing now is using what we call a reference or an object data type which is an array so this is actually mutable it means this is changeable whereas the other values the primitive types were unchangeable and we saw that because they just created copies when we set them equal to a new variable whereas here what we're doing is actually passing in this entire array so this array goes in and then what we're going to do is push five onto that array. Then we're going to print out whatever the value of the array is, which should be one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to come down here. And now we refresh the page to see what we actually get, which is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now, why did this value X change? Like X is equal to one, two, three, four here. Up here, all we did was push five onto this parameter array. That's not the same variable X. Why did it change? Well, again, that's because what we did is we passed the actual object to this parameter we didn't just pass you know some copy of it or something that looked like this object right we passed the actual physical thing so when we change this it's going to affect x and it's going to affect arr and that is kind of the basis behind mutability and it's very important to understand because you can design functions that actually don't need to return specific values they can just modify the input that you've sent to them so in this instance the best you know example is just to use an array you can see here that we wanted to add five to an array rather than you know having to return a new array from this function which we've done before we can simply just tack on this five by actually modifying the input here now i can do the same things inside of here where i can do like arr at one is equal to five and we'll have a look at how this works and you can see that now we get one five three four one five three four again notice you know it's not changing now let's even go a little bit more complicated here and say var arr2 equals arr now i'm going to go arr2 at one equals 100 and what do you guys think is going to happen now so i'm printing you know arr i'll also print arr2 first so let's say console.log we'll do arr2 arr and then x what is going to be the value of all three of these variables here are they going to be the same are they going to be different does this you know do anything that i've just created a new variable inside of here well let's have a look and obviously no it does not again it doesn't because when we do this we're not copying this array we're simply kind of just having a pointer that goes to it and says hey you know this is where the array is um you know this is where you can modify it and that's how it works now i'm going to go into a little bit deeper level of how this works um just by doing something on the drawing tablet really quickly well i'm actually I'll just do it with my mouse because it's nothing you know too important essentially when we have an array so i'm just going to draw one out here and excuse me because i'm just drawing with my mouse when we create a variable you know let's say x and we set it equal to this array what we do is instead of having it hold the value of the array it actually holds the kind of pointer or the location in memory where this array is stored so let's say this array is stored inside you know our computer memory maybe it has an id that's something like you know two right well when we say x equals some array rather than saying you know x is equal to this array what's actually happening is x is equal to this id so it actually knows the location of the array but it doesn't really necessarily know the value unless it goes to that location to look it up so when I do something like y equals x, what I've actually just done is just made a copy of the pointer to this array. So what that means is since x, you know, pointed to the array up there, 
what's happening now is y is now going to point to the same array. So they're pointing to actually the same object in memory, which allows us to change them from different variables. So this is what we call an alias when we do something like this, where we just have another name for the same actual object. And I've just been doing this example with arrays, but essentially any data type that is not a string float number uh, undefined or null works like this. And rather than storing, you know, the actual value of the object where we can copy it and kind of change it around variables, it stores the actual like location and memory of that object. Now I'm going to pause for one second just to get something up on my screen. And I'm going to show you guys how we can create a copy of arrays rather than having to, uh, what do you call it, change the value because sometimes you don't want to do this. Okay, so to copy an array, there's actually two ways. Now, the old way I'm going to show you first, which kind of makes a little more sense to me because I'm from a Python background, but there is this way in the new version of JavaScript that I'll show you. I'm not really going to explain it because I don't understand it completely, but it does make a copy of the array for you. So what I've done here is said, you know, var x equals one, two, three, four, five. I want to say var y and I want it to be equal to x, but I want it to just be equal to an array that has the exact same values of x, but is not the same array, right? I don't want it to point to the same object because maybe I want to modify this one, but I don't want to modify x, right? So how do I do that? Well, there's two ways. The old way is to do x dot slice. So what this actually does, and this is a method that you can use on arrays, regardless of if you're copying them or not, is takes a kind of section of the array and copies it. So in this instance, when we don't put any values inside the slice function or the slice method, what it's going to do is actually just copy this array entirely value by value. Now, if I want to actually say, you know, just copy the first three elements of this array, what I would do is something like zero comma four, I believe. And what this is going to do is take all the elements starting from index zero up to, but not including four. So actually, sorry, this should be three. So what that's going to do is simply copy the elements one, two, three, because we won't include index three, because that is kind of the end bounds. So I'll show you, I'm just like, I'm not making this up. This actually works. Let's refresh here. And you can see we get one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So that is how the slice kind of works. If I just do this, we'll have a look and we can see that we get this entire thing. But now notice that I can change the value. So I can say something like Y two uh, equals nine, nine, nine. And this will not change X. So you can see this changes my Y value, but it doesn't change X. So that's kind of an easy way to copy. Now there's another way to copy. Uh, I'll show you that as well here. So let's leave actually everything that's there, but let's just make a different copy. So what we can actually do in here is do dot, 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 and then X. Now I don't actually know really what this operator is, but I just saw that when I was looking it up, that this is a way that you can make a copy as well. So if I do this and refresh, we get the exact same answer. So we keep stick with that copy. What this has done is essentially just copied X and, you know, put that into its new array. So if you guys are interested in looking at how that works, you know, I urge you guys to, but I figured I'd show it in case anyone wanted to get a look at it. And that has kind of been mutability. So hopefully you kind of understand now the difference between a primitive type and a reference slash slash object type in JavaScript and why we need to understand the difference because sometimes we're going to modify the actual, you know, input and sometimes we're going to create a copy of it and do some other kind of alterations on it. So this is what we would call a copy or a clone this value Y. Whereas before when we just did something like, you know, var Z equals X, that would be known as an alias or simply another name for whatever this X is, right? So anyways, that has been it for mutability. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and let me know if you want to see any other JavaScript videos coming up in the future.